I'm doing up this video log entry as I'm getting ready for the day, so I'm trimming my eyebrows right now because they grow out very quickly. So it's been fun, honestly, but then again I don't really um, have a problem being alone, so I usually find things to do if I don't know, when, I, when I'm alone. It's never been an issue. Uh, I've been walking the streets of Seoul by myself, and um, well, whenever I speak to people, I just you know I don't I don't really strike up conversations with strangers, but I do um, you know I do try to get myself out of my comfort zone. I do ask things that I don't know, mm, but by default, on on a day to day basis, back in Singapore, that's not the kind of person I am. I'm actually very afraid to reach out to people and ask stuff, so um, yeah, I guess this is the learning point here. But then again, when you're alone, you are forced to survive, so you're forced to rely on yourself, so it's not really an option. But it's interesting watching me do stuff that I wouldn't otherwise do back home. Yeah, because you only have yourself to... Um, you know, to really depend on. I can't wait for my friend to do all the talking. Usually if I'm traveling with my other good friends, um, you know, they, they'll do the asking. I'll just keep quiet because yeah, I'm afraid to ask for help. I don't know why <laughs> it's a social anxiety thing. I'm still afraid to go to like a proper Korean restaurant or, you know, an, an eating house to order food because yeah, a huge language barrier there, but I did it yesterday. Um, I hope to summon the guts to do it again today. Um, because yeah, why am I it such a shame to just miss out on good food? But you do get turned away if you are eating alone from some of the restaurants. They only cater to uh, two or more diners. So yeah, I got turned away from uh, oh, two restaurants I think yesterday. Because I didn't, yeah, because I was alone. Yeah, well, anyway, you do feel lonely as well, especially in a city like Seoul, because dating, dating is such a huge thing here. It is, it's literally a culture. I mean, not that you don't see couples everywhere. I mean, you see them all the time in Singapore as well. You see young couples all the time in almost every country you go to. But in Korea, it's like on another level. It's if you're not with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you have to be with your friends. And they were just, there was just a whole swarm of them yesterday when I was at uh, Yuinaru. Yuinaru is the um, the station where you get off for Hangang Park. So I was at Hangang Park and yeah, Yuinaru was crowded. Full of people. And yeah, full of young Koreans. They either looked like they were in their 20s early to mid 20s a few a couple of late 20s here and there but people above the age of 30 i don't think i really saw those over there and they were all there to picnic and stuff and i actually felt really lonely and probably not in a good way when i was there and so and i had a really full bladder so note to self if you're ever visiting hangang park do not come on an empty bladder also toilets for korean subways uh some of them are located outside the station and some are located in the station so just be careful because once you tap in and you tap out they do deduct um, an amount from your team money card I think even if it's from the same station so just be careful to watch out for the signs uh, that tell you whether where the, where the toilets are if you really have to go and so lesson learned when you're solo traveling or when you're traveling in general if you have a semi full bladder that means like you feel like it's 0 0.5 full or 0 0.6 full, 0 0.4 full, and you know there's a toilet nearby. Don't get lazy, just go just go do your business and then come back later with an empty bladder. You'll definitely not regret it because if you don't, and the next stop you go to either has a really long queue. That's what happened at Yoenaru. The queue was just crazy for the ladies, um, and I couldn't use it. I couldn't hold it for that long, so no, actually I did, I held it, so I just held it all the way back to another train station. Yeah, so yesterday I went to Seoul Museum of History, that was very interesting. Um, maybe because I've taken architecture modules, so I care a bit more about urban urban planning and the likes and histories of how cities were made and built. So that one was really sort of like a brief, even if I couldn't digest all the information, it was a very good brief on um, how, like a crash course of sorts, and how 
it's all came about and yeah it, it, it really was a period of a uh, rapid the miracle in the Han River that really was a period of rapid economic uh, development and, and urbanization um, yeah so I, and I'm living in Jongno so Jongno is a he was a the key of one of the main um, areas that they one of the areas that they talked about in the um, museum's exhibition so that was very nice um, it's like living here and being able to see you know you're able to, to live out the history you live out you're able to understand you know experience firsthand the content of, what, of whatever has been shown in the exhibition that's very interesting what else um, I also went to Guangpamen Square and I went to Kyobo Book Center to pick up a copy of a Human Decency by Gong Ji Yong. I thought about picking up Photoshop Murder by Kim Yong Ha as well, but decided against it because a copy of that is available online. So I don't think I'll spend 5,000 won on it. I'll probably just print out the PDF version that I found online. Um, and also, sometimes I like Kim Yong Ha's writing style. The, at least the translation of it too. I don't know. I don't read the original Korean, so I don't know. But yeah. Uh, but anyway, the copy of the book that I picked up um, had like the Korean title in front, so it was written in a yeah, it was printed in very large font. And then at the bottom, you see the tiny uh, English translation of the title. So when I went to the sales girl, she spoke to me in Korean, even though I don't. I look nothing like Korean. Um, and she probably assumed that I could speak the language, just that I was a foreigner. What I've noticed is that the younger people can tell straight away that I'm not Korean. The funny thing about uh, Ch Singaporean Chinese people is that we don't really look... Um, we don't look like we're from China, but we don't look like we're from Taiwan or Hong Kong. Hong Kong maybe a bit, but not really still. Um, and we don't really look like anything. I mean, we don't really exactly look Malaysian either. Malaysian China. No, we kind of look similar to them, but we dress very differently. We have a whole range of uh, styles in Singapore. Some people are more into Japanese fashion, some are more into Western, some are more into Korean. So really, it really differs. And even if it's Korean, they adapt it somehow. So yeah, I think appearance-wise, it's a straight up giveaway, Yes, especially yesterday, um, that I wasn't... Uh, yeah, that I was in Korean, but yeah, I think the the funny thing is I think only the younger people know. I still get spoken to in Korean by the old folks, so the elderly, uh, and there are quite a number of them living around, living or working in Jongno Samga. So that's what's very interesting because Jongno used to be like this uh, business commercial district for the Koreans. Back during the uh, back when there was the Japanese occupation. Yeah, so I got spoken to in Korean by a couple of uh, elderly, you know, asking for directions, which is funny because I'm like, I don't know, sorry, I don't speak Korean. And um, so far, not a single person has spoken to me in Chinese yet. Uh, so that's quite funny because I thought that would have been the language that, yeah, that people would have spoken to me and I've been spoken to in English, which is nice. Uh, somehow they just pick it up straight away that I'm English. Here and there, if I walk past, I hear them uh, say, like, you know, the sales girls, whenever you walk past them, they will change languages to whatever whatever they think your native language is. So, when I walk past sometimes, yeah, they do, they do shout in, like, Japanese or something. And that could be my outfit, because the stuff I'm wearing right now, I bought from Japan. Uh, back when I went there with a friend last year. So it could be that. Yeah, but all in all, pretty. It's always nice, you know. I've been having a really good time. I want to do this again. I want to go somewhere else alone, maybe for a longer period this time, because four days feel. Four days, you know, that's probably too short for any real absorption of a country. But the thing is, I've been to Seoul multiple times. Um, but yeah, I just want to have a proper break again. Um, I like going in spring, I like going in autumn, so when the weather's a bit cooler, or like early summer, late summer maybe, when things are changing up. Mm, yeah, I'll think about it. All I know is I feel very much at peace. 
and I don't want to go back, but I know I have to, and part of me even wants to, I mean, I don't want to go back if you ask me, but I, I miss my family, even though it's only been a few days, and, um, you know, I think I do need to work, I need to suffer a bit to understand what it's like to enjoy these leave days to yourself. Because if you don't, then you don't get a fair outlook on life, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but all I know is I don't plan on staying on at this job, even though the pay is okay. It's probably the only thing out there that pays um, an arts graduate with like zero proper skills imparted from her time at university. You know, like this kind of salary, especially someone my caliber. I'm not exactly the top student, not particularly remarkable in any way. In fact, I would say my resume is lacking. But yeah, so this is probably the best paying job that I can get with my resume. And here's the thing. I'm not happy here. I don't know why. I mean, I got used to it, so that helps a bit, but... I just know that this is not what I want to do in the long term. I still want to go into teaching, even though I keep getting rejected. <laughs> they really don't want me, I think, in the teaching service. But, you know, if you want something, I guess you keep trying. You make it happen. I wanted to go on a solo trip for about as long as I could remember, but I doubted my own independence, doubted my own resourcefulness. But I went anyway, and, well, guess what? I'm surviving so far. In fact, I'm having a whale of a time. Even though it doesn't sound like it because my voice is very flat. But yeah, I'm having a good time. It's probably the best I've had in a while since I started work. And I just want to say that it's important to recharge, be by yourself for a couple of days. It really helps us all. Of course, there are things that you will experience, you will feel a kind of loneliness. And having read Roker before I came here, he talked about solitude a lot in this book. So I'm allowing myself to experience it. I'm very familiar with solitude, to be honest. In fact, there are times where I feel lonelier um, in Singapore than back here, because at least in Singapore, you know, the funny thing is, um, it's sort of expected of you to have a social life, because you're not alone. You have friends and family. So sometimes when you're outside alone, you do feel like, you know, why am I not in a group? But here, yeah, because I am alone, I am absolutely, utterly alone. I don't feel that sort of expectation. It's like, if I know I have to have lunch, I will have to eat it alone because there's no one else here. And I don't, I don't feel sad or bad about it. But I will, back home, if, um, if I know that there are, that I have friends, I could actually ask. You know? But here, it's not a choice. You are supposed to be alone. <laughs> Of course, if you want to talk to other travellers, that's always a possibility. Some of them are very friendly. And I had something else to say, but I forgot. Yeah, I forgot what it was. When I remember, I'll talk about it. For the time being, I'll put an end to this video log entry here. See you.